Oh. Jimmy wanted an apology. From that, I didn't see the monologue. From what I heard, he ended the monologue by saying, if you give me an apology, it's a wrap. That's all he wants is an apology. And Aaron For a joke. I we got know. comedians asking other comedians to apologize for jokes. I don't know if it was a joke as this much as what I'm saying. it was just something that like, was taken out of context. To Jimmy college. thinks, pause. So when you were saying that he doesn't want that list to come out, you weren't saying that he was on that no. list? No. No. Okay. See, that was a lot of people, if they saw it out of context. They know, nobody watched the f***ing clip, that's why. Right. What's up, guys? Welcome back. I don't know if you've been following the Jimmy Kimmel Aaron Rodgers beef, but it's the gift that keeps on giving because I honestly cannot get enough of it. And Rogan's always had a side beef with Kimmel as well, which goes back to the pandemic days. But I've got to say, never have I ever seen three dudes who don't care about what other people think caring so much about what other people think. So I'm going to update you on the latest episode of JRE with Aaron Rodgers because Rogan brings up the Jimmy Kimmel beef. And just to give you an idea of how much this has escalated, a few weeks ago, Jimmy Kimmel basically threatened to sue Rogers for calling him a kitty fiddler without evidence. And since then, Rogers went on the Pat McAfee show and tried to clear the air and also on Rogan this week. Just so you guys know, I have seen the Pat McAfee show where Tom and Bert just burst in to promote their new vodka. So I'll have to cover that next week because I'm going to chill this weekend and enjoy the Super Bowl. But yeah, I've got all your emails and I'll, uh, I'll cover that next week. But in all of this, I think Andrew Schultz, believe it or not, has the best take. And when Schultz has the most down-to-earth rational perspective, you know everybody involved are acting like a bunch of snowflakes. So stick around, I'm going to break it all down for you guys and get you up to speed. I'm also going to spend some time focusing on Rogan's ongoing beef with Hollywood because now that he's signed his new Spotify deal valued at up to $250 million, he's starting to look like a massive hypocrite and it's got to do with how he's no longer in control of his corporate sponsorships. So if you actually stop and look at the big picture, there really isn't any difference between Rogan and the Hollywood establishment that he's constantly crapping on. So there's so much to talk about. As usual, shout out to my regulars. We're getting close to 110,000 subscribers strong now, and we're still growing by the day. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all of my uploads. But let's start with the Aaron Rodgers, Jimmy Kivel controversy. The best part about all of this is how it all started this time last year when Rodgers went on the Pat McAfee show and they were talking about the Epstein list. I believe that this has been going on for a long time. It's interesting uh, timing on everything. There's a lot of other things going on in the world. Did you hear about the Epstein client list uh, about to be released too? What's that? What are you talking about? There's some files that have, have some names on it that might be uh, getting released pretty soon. Oh. So it's important to understand this next bit. Aaron Rodgers was talking about how there are all these things happening around the world at the moment to distract us from the Epstein list. That was what Jimmy Kimmel roasted him over. So Rodgers hadn't actually mentioned Jimmy Kimmel or anything like that. It was Kimmel himself who started to have a dig at Rodgers. Then in January of this year, in response to Kimmel's claims about him, Rogers hit back by simply saying, it seems like Jimmy Kimmel is worried about the list coming out. Has something to do with the Epstein list that came out? <laughs> Feels like it. <laughs> Feels like it. That's supposed to be coming out soon. That's supposed to be coming out soon. Look, this guy's been it's waiting in his wine people. cellar. Yeah. I've been waiting in my wine I'm, cellar for this thing. I'm, a lot of people, including Jimmy Kimmel, are really hoping that doesn't ah, come <laughs> All right. All right. Obviously, a clip from this particular program was run on Jimmy Kimmel's show uh, whenever Aaron brought up the, the list and then Jimmy mocked him for it. Mm -hmm. Aaron has not forgotten about that. But here we are sitting right in front of that nice bottle of scotch. Mm -hmm. What do you say? I'm waiting to celebrate something. Oh, yeah. yeah something <laughs> He's awesome. been waiting That's for the that. one. <laughs> You've been waiting for hey, I'll tell you what. If that list comes out, I definitely will be popping popping some sort of bottle. Hey, you've been calling for it for a few years now. So that was it, right? That's all he said about Kimmel and the list. And remember, Jimmy was the one who started this, but he couldn't take it. He went on this long monologue at the beginning of his show, absolutely roasting Aaron Rodgers, basically calling him a full-blown conspiracy theorist, saying he's had too many concussions and he's dumb, he's not well-educated, basically telling him to just, you know, stick to playing football. The usual stuff, right? And I'm not going to lie, it was pretty funny. Kimmel's writers came up with some pretty funny one lines Unfortunately, though, I think Kimmel took it one step too far and made a veiled threat to Rogers by saying, instead of having this discussion on talk shows, 
why don't we take it to a courtroom where you'll have to actually prove your claims? So I'll give you my opinion on the whole legal angle in a moment, but let's hear from Aaron Rodgers as he attempts to clear the air by peddling back his claims. This is good. This will give you guys the full picture. So in my opinion, you went after me. That's fine. You're a comedian. Go for it. Not offended. But that was an L. Fast forward to, uh, again, unprompted. We're talking on our show as we do about a lot of different topics. Somehow the Epstein client list comes up. But we said there's an, there's an excitement to expose corruption. And what I joked about the other day about popping a bottle, there's excitement about when the corruption anywhere gets exposed and people who are accused of these heinous crimes get exposed, that will be nice. And then unprompted, he comes out and says that I'm an overly concussed wacko. In my opinion, it seemed like because I believe that there was a list and that there were names on that. And then we, we fast forward to this last week, right? And I said, a lot of people, and I'm quoting myself here, a lot of people, including Jimmy Kimmel, are really hoping that doesn't come out. End quote. That's what I said. That's the entire quote. Okay, I was referring to the fact that if there is a list, which again, this hasn't come out yet, this was just a deposition, right? And there are names on it, then that would be the second time that a soft brain junior college student, you know, wacko, anti vax, anti Semite, purveyor, spreader of misinformation, conspiracy theorist, MAGA, Whatever other things have been said by him and other people in the media would be right twice. I totally understand how serious an allegation of pedophilia would be. So for him to be upset about that, I get it. Did you watch the quote? Because that's exactly what I said. Verbatim what I said on the show. I'm not stupid enough to accuse you of that with absolutely zero evidence, uh, concrete evidence. It, that's ridiculous. Okay, so no one really knows exactly what Aaron Rodgers meant when he said that, and everyone will interpret it differently. For example, when I heard him say it, I immediately assumed he meant that Kimmel would be worried that a whole bunch of his Hollywood buddies would be on the list because he's a talk show host and he knows all these guys. I personally don't think he meant Kimmel himself was going to be caught out as one of the guys on the list. However, I can definitely see how other people might interpret what he said as Kimmel being on the list himself. But from a legal perspective, my opinion is Kimmel doesn't necessarily have an open and shut case here. It's obvious that different people would interpret it differently. And at the end of the day, if Kimmel was serious and had actually sought legal advice over his position, I highly doubt that any decent lawyer would advise Jimmy to go on his talk show, broadcast to millions of people and roast the guy who he intended to pursue a legal action against. The advice is usually don't say or do anything that could potentially jeopardize the case. I think Kimmel was just flexing and honestly, it seemed like he felt really threatened by it, which is weird given that he's a comedian who roasts people for a living. So then when Rogers went on JRE this week, Rogan brought it up and gave his two cents on the whole drama. Why did you bring up Jimmy Kimmel when that whole thing was going on? I had said on the McAfee show before they had talked about, you know, forever they talked about releasing the Epstein list right. or whatever. And I had said that on the show, and he had gone on his show and called me a tin, fo tin foil hat wearing, you know, doofus who is talking about, you know, the. In, I thought he had said that I'm an idiot for even thinking there's a list that's out there. So when you were saying that he doesn't want that list to come out, you weren't saying that he was on that no. list. No. No. Okay. See, that was a lot of people. If they saw it out of context, they no, nobody watched the f***ing clip. That's why. Right. They just saw a headline. They saw a very oh, small it's the anti-vax guy again. Let's. I, hammer him. Yeah. Like, look, I, and I said this when I, t when I was back on the show, like, that's a big f accusation that I wouldn't make. And I said, Jimmy, I'm glad you're not on the list. And all I'm asking is, let's have the same energy yeah. for you talking about the vax and people, if you're not vaxxed, just being die left off. to die. Yeah. Yeah, so clearly Rogers is backpedaling, and like I said before, I don't think he really needs to. People seem to think that these types of defamation cases are open and shut, but Kimmel would really have an uphill battle here if it ever went to trial. 
and it'd just end up being a Streisand effect as well. Everyone would be talking about it, it'd be the hottest new trial, maybe not as entertaining as Depp v. Heard, but it'd still sell a few newspapers if you know what I'm talking about. Not to mention the fact that Aaron Rodgers is filthy rich and could easily afford to just settle it out of court if he didn't want any of the publicity. But lawsuits aside, Andrew Schultz got in on the action a couple of weeks ago on Brilliant Idiots, and I think he absolutely nailed it with his take, so let's take a look at that. But just quietly, have you guys noticed that Schultz speaks differently on Brilliant Idiots compared to Flagrant? I don't know, is that like a thing that I just noticed but everyone else knew? I feel like that's what's going on here. Anyway, take a look. I told Jimmy, I said, to be a fan. Jimmy disappointed me. I'm heartbroken. Well, so, well, I'm a huge fan, and to see him act like this is, is heartbreaking, bro. <laughs> Please don't listen to Flagler tomorrow, Jimmy. No. <laughs> so you, <laughs> why you do that to Jimmy, I'm man? disappointed in him. I looked up to him. Damn. I admired him. Did you see? I didn't see the response. He's acting like a lesbian. Oh. He's acting like a purple-haired lesbian online. Listen, nobody wants kids to be hurt. Nobody wants kids to be involved in any way. It's terrifying when that comes to your family. Nobody wants, I don't think anybody here wants Jimmy's, I don't think Aaron wants Jimmy's family or Jimmy to feel any sort of uh, lack of security at oh, all. Oh, Jimmy wanted an apology. From that, I didn't see the monologue. From what I heard, he ended the monologue by saying, if you give me an apology, it's a wrap. That's all he wants is an apology. And Aaron- For a joke. We got comedians asking other comedians to apologize for jokes. I don't know if it was a joke as this much as- This is what I'm saying. It was just something that was taken out of context. Jimmy college. thinks, pause. Jimmy thinks that Jimmy thinks that like we're being unfair to him. No, we're treating you like a comic because you're a comic to us, man. You're somebody we looked up to. When we were growing up, we looked up to you. Just tell <laughs> tell your boy Jimmy this is that he's you, listening. I'm he's, sure. Jimmy, you're a comedian to us, bro. So you as a comedian, you can't be out here when somebody makes fun of you after you made fun of them, calling the cops saying you want to take him to court and now ask him for an apology for a joke. We hold you to the standards of a comedian. If you were Ryan Seacrest, okay, I get it. You're not Ryan Seacrest. You could body Aaron Rodgers. You're nice with jokes. You could body him in a heartbeat. Shout out to I, Jimmy Kimmel, bro. I have between Cat Williams, we Jimmy love you, Kimmel, Jimmy. Joe We Coy. love you, but you're still a comedian to us, Jimmy. So that's still the a th comedian to us. So that's the thing. You'll Comedi never not be a comedian, Comedians bro. want comedians just to be so comedians. So imagine Eddie time. Murphy sued someone for making a joke about that. So there's nothing. It's like, it'd be heartbreaking. But, I'd be like, are you kidding me? So like, there's got to be things that if somebody said about you, you wouldn't want to just, you wouldn't want to make Of jokes. course, there's th there's certain things that would be, that would be hurtful if people mm -hmm. made fun of me, of course. But if I started making fun of them and then they responded with that, that is the game you play. You know if you're if you're a battle rapper or something like that and you make fun of somebody and you know that they go there. Yeah, yeah, now yeah. he didn't think Aaron went there. That's what he thought. He thought he had an easy target that wasn't gonna punch back. Mm. And he found out he didn't. And I bet you let's let's see if he's making more jokes. Let's see. Yeah, so that pretty much sums it up completely. And the important thing to emphasize, which I pointed out earlier, is that Kimmel started this. He roasted Aaron Rodgers unprovoked, and Rodgers hit back by basically saying, Oh, well, he must be worried about the list coming out. I'm sorry, whatever you think of Aaron Rodgers, Jimmy Kimmel is the softest dude in Hollywood. If you can't take the heat, then move to Austin, bro. And speaking of moving to Austin, Joe Rogan actually has a side beef with Jimmy Kimmel as well, which is kind of adjacent to what's going on here, and it goes back to the pandemic. And we saw Aaron Rodgers bring it up earlier on Pat McAfee, where he said Jimmy shouldn't be focusing on me, but instead focusing on his own contributions to misinformation during the pandemic and taking responsibility for his own mistakes. This is where Rogan comes into the picture because he took it personally when Kimmel said way back during the pandemic that only jabbed people should be admitted to hospital and if you're not jabbed and you took the horse goo instead, then hospitals should turn you away to which he added RIP. Brutal. I don't know what you guys think, but that's a pretty irresponsible thing to say, especially coming from someone like Kimmel who got so butthurt after Aaron Rodgers said he's worried about a list coming out. Well, that was the Kimmel thing, right? Well, that was, no. That was, Did you ever talk to that, that dude? Have you ever talked to him? I've been on the show yeah. years ago, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> would, you, would, you, would you ever have a conversation with him in person? Of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. I don't think that conversation is a conversation that should be held in front of an audience in five-minute chunks like they do on television. Yeah. That's a conversation that you have to let air out. I want to know why you think the way you think. Him. You know, sit down with Jimmy. Is that really how you feel? Like people that are sick from a disease that was created in a f lab that was funded by our own tax dollars? 
that's how you feel like? Those people should just die because they don't trust the government or they don't trust the pharmaceutical industrial complex that's been responsible for lying. They have the, some of the biggest criminal fines in, in, in the in history this? of this country. Yeah. And that all of a sudden, they're the ones we're supposed to trust? The liberals were always the ones that were anti-big pharma. They were the, always the ones that had no trust anti in big, big government. Anti-big banks. Yeah, yeah. anti-big yeah. banks. Yeah. All that. And then all of a anti -war. sudden- Anti-war. Yeah. All of a sudden, the ideology shifts. The very thing that they use to control the media in terms of the news, they use it to control the media in terms of late night talk shows and monologues as well. It's the same influence because they're the same sponsors. The same people are spending the same money on the same networks. If it affects your livelihood and affects your future and your ability to do this thing that you love doing, which is hosting a talk show, and you're doing it on a network that is paid for by that money, Guess what? That affects you. Okay, so this is where I wanted to get to with you guys because Rogan just brought up a really interesting point about being captured by corporations and having to self-censor. And for the most part, I actually agree with him. It's definitely a problem. In fact, he himself knows that his popularity is due in part to the fact that he's maintained a much higher degree of independence compared to Hollywood and the mainstream media. But here's the thing. This could be about to change. If you didn't catch it, I made a previous video explaining the details and differences between Rogan's new Spotify deal and the old one, and I outlined how his new deal is probably worth about half as much as his previous deal. That's because his old one was a straight up exclusivity contract, meaning all Rogan had to do was agree to only publish JRE on Spotify and nowhere else. He was still able to monetize his podcast himself with his own ad reads and sponsorships, which would have contributed a significant amount of money to his bank account. The exclusivity deal was believed to be around $200 million over three years, and if you include his own monetization on top of that, my opinion is he would have brought in another $80 to $100 million per year on top of the Spotify deal. That means over the last three years, based on my assumptions, Rogan would have made somewhere around the half a billion dollars mark. Crazy, huh? But his new deal is different. You see, Rogan is no longer monetizing JRE, Spotify is. And as part of this new agreement, Spotify will now distribute JRE across multiple platforms instead of just their own. And this is the key. Spotify will now monetize JRE themselves and give Rogan a cut of the ad revenue. So the new $250 million contract that's being reported is an estimate of how much Rogan will earn all up, including his minimum guarantee and the ad revenue sharing arrangement. Like I said, that's around half of what he earned in the previous three years, so it's a massive pay cut for Rogan when you look at it from that perspective. Now, I went into the reasons why in my previous video, so go check that out if you're interested. But here's the bottom line. This marks the first time that JRE will be controlled by a publicly listed corporation. What that means is not only will Spotify be responsible for organizing all the ads and sponsorships, but they will have to ensure that all their advertising complies with the various platforms they distribute to, such as Apple, Amazon, and of course, YouTube. That's why when Rogan makes comments like this, if it affects your livelihood and affects your future and your ability to do this thing that you love doing, which is hosting a talk show, and you're doing it on a network that is paid for by that money, guess what? That affects you. Well, he could soon be the one getting the tap on the shoulder from Spotify saying, hey, buddy, the things you're talking about are upsetting our advertisers, or maybe even YouTube will start demonetizing JRE, which is what they did previously just before he left the platform back in 2020. None of this is new. So I think it's ironic that Rogan thinks he's somehow exempt from the things that he's criticizing people like Jimmy Kimmel and the Hollywood establishment for doing when he's clearly in the same boat now where he's getting paid by a publicly listed company to sell his content across multiple platforms. So I think it's only a matter of time before all of this blows up again. Rogan will start calling out YouTube for demonetizing his podcast, or even worse, Rogan will start self-censoring so Spotify can get that ad revenue and pay him his cut. From where I'm sitting, it's a bit of the old pot calling the kettle black, but time will tell.
Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to take a break for the weekend, like I said, and just enjoy the Super Bowl and all the madness that follows. Just quickly though, I've received quite a few emails from you guys about Tom and Burke crashing Pat McAfee's show to promote their new vodka. There are way too many to reply to, so rest assured I've seen all your emails and I'll be sure to cover this next week. Those guys are completely, completely out of control. But if you haven't subscribed yet, consider jumping on board so that you don't miss out on any of my uploads. That's it from me. I'll catch you in the next one. By the way, your dog's been farting like crazy. Is he? <laughs> it smells oh, so Marshall, bad. Oh, Marshall, what are you doing, buddy? <laughs> farting? I was like, I don't want you to think yeah, that was me. Up. He's, uh, it smells like, uh, yeah, he farts. Some sort of, he's a dog. Yeah. Asian dog's food fart. or something. That's good. No, he didn't yeah. eat any Asian food. He eats, um, he eats raw food.